Welcome to Real Estate Investing Abundance, the show for busy, fulfilled professionals like you to learn how to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Now, here is your host, Dr. Alan Lomax. Hello, enlightened investors, and welcome to Real Estate Investing Abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Alan, and it is a pleasure being with you today as we discover how we can drive 50K to 100K per month in almost automated income using a simple e-commerce game plan that generated this entrepreneur and his clients over $100 million in collective online sales in only one to two hours a day. Neil Twa is the co-founder and CEO of Voltage Digital Marketing. He has been launching operating and growing private label e-commerce businesses for almost nine years. As of today, he and his clients have sold over $100 million in physical products, primarily through Amazon FBA sales channel. Neil shares his blueprint for how to build an online business that can generate a passive, almost automated six-figure income in just 12 to 18 months while setting up the business for potentially millions in sales within 18 to 24 months. So Neil, share with us a memorable experience from your formative years that helped you to be who you are today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on the show, Dr. Allen. I appreciate it. I think the thing that comes to me, and it's a it's a testament, I think, to what a lot of entrepreneurs and in those who might want to set off uh, into their own investment, their own business, their own whatever, or I think a point of failure that many people feel like is a big gotcha actually turned into a big life-changing event for me and kind of a refocus of priorities and time and energy. And that is going bankrupt as a business. It was a business strategy due to a change in a a business venture I got into in which I got leveraged a little too far, a little too deep. And I discovered that my partners weren't in the same alignment with me. That was kind of a rude awakening as to how to structure business deals, how to structure GVs and partnership relationships. I learned a pretty good life lesson in that one. If I'd only had a business coach ahead of me, I probably wouldn't have fallen into that hole. But I had to learn that experience myself. And it really gave me a good perspective on people, you know, processes, money, how to deal with finances, and really asking myself, what is the worst thing that can happen outside of dying and not having a chance to, to redo this? It, for most people, it feels, you know, bankruptcy feels like the major, you know, major failure, the biggest point of failure you could have. People might look at you and say, you're, you know, good in business. You're a terrible person. How could you do that? You or your family. I mean, there's just a million things that could be thrown at you. And quite frankly, you find out who your friends and family really are when you struggle financially. And if you have never done it to that level, you get to figure out who's in your court and who's willing to let you sink. So that was an interesting life lesson, financial lesson, a business lesson, and a definite growth and maturity lesson. No doubt about it. Yeah, those hard lessons are some of the best lessons. And oftentimes we can look back on it and go, well, I'm Kind of glad I had that experience. But, Pretty much. Uh, yeah. And yet, they're no fun to go through. That is for certain. Yeah. No doubt about it. Well, you have a very unique approach to investing and to business. And so I'm really glad to have you on the show today so you can share what it is that you're doing. So yeah. just give us an overview of the company and what you're doing. And what is this term that you call urban mining hack? Yeah. So in simple terms, Voltage, basically we launch, we operate, uh, we scale, acquire or exit e-commerce brands. And we focus in, uh, we focus predominantly on the Amazon FBA channel known as Fulfilled by Amazon. Uh, we did that because it gave us both growth. It gave us upside potential economies of scale that could become very large without taking a lot of infrastructure cost to do it. And by leveraging and partnering with Amazon's infrastructure, we can deliver those products to the customer literally in two days without us having to manage that. And that's what's very powerful about being able to create these and giving us the opportunity for that almost automated income because I don't have warehouses full of products, I don't have employees, but I can leverage six, seven, multi-seven, even eight-figure companies through that channel uh, without the need for any of those things. So Voltage is basically giving people the opportunity to understand and, and incubate with us through the launch of products into that channel, the growth of brands, and then obviously looking at it truly with the end in mind, which is building that business to exit for six, seven, eight figure paydays, depending upon how it's structured and when you exit, giving people the opportunity to basically go from cradle to grave with us through an entire e-commerce model. If you've understood exiting or have never done it, we support you in that. If you've never started an online business, we support you in that. Taking people with you know English as a second language who have no business and income experience and uh, setting them up for 100000 a month in business and done that with you know 19-year-old high school dropouts and homeschool moms and all kinds of people. Um, it really has to do with the aptitude 
and the desire and willingness to understand and go after the e-com model and giving you that opportunity to invest and, and deploy capital in such a way where you have a physical asset and inventory. Um, you know, like real estate, one of the bonuses, of course, is uh, everybody knows real estate as an asset, as a true wealth building initiative. We saw it as well as a virtual real estate uh, in the online community and having tangible assets that we control with uh, capital deployed to those assets. So it creates a wonderful hybrid of that investing. It's not a pure investing model. It's not a pure passive investing model, but it's a hybrid investing model in which we you know, help people own those companies and exit those companies. We'll be right back after a brief announcement. Are you a busy professional, passionate about the work of your calling, yet realize that even though you love what you are doing, you're exchanging your time for money? You know that if you were to lose the ability to exchange time for money, your financial well-being will be in jeopardy. If you can relate, I have great news. Steve Talker Capital is an investment company designed for professionals to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Remove the anxiety of an uncertain financial future and go to steedtalker.com. Get your free one-page 10-step guide to passive real estate investing. So if we'd like to get into e-commerce, but we don't have any e-commerce experience and we don't have a product, where do we begin? Yeah, so the biggest question I always get is, uh, what the hell do I sell or what the heck or however you want to say that to your, to your own inclination. But it's literally, you know, what do I sell? So the biggest factors that, you know, we usually get with the type of clientele that comes to us looking to do this is, you know, time. Time investment is a big one. I've got other things I'm working on. I have primary businesses. I've got, you know, 27 rental short-term properties. I've got multiple franchises. I've got multi-complexes, et cetera. Where and how can I spend time doing this so it doesn't take away from that? And the second question is, if I do that and I want to sell something, what do I sell? Like, you know, what the heck do I even sell and how do I make it successful? So those are the biggest questions we answer and have learned to answer for ourselves. As I own both a software company, a consulting company, multiple JVs, we have our own businesses as well as coaching and mentoring. So the time management thing I get. But what I also understand is that due to the no employee, no warehouse and, and other opportunities that this model provides, time is more focused on the revenue generating activities and less on the amount of time you spend. It's more of the focused time you spend. Uh, knowing exactly what activities to accomplish and which ones are just um, productivities, masked as activities. So we keep people very focused to address those times so that if they have one to two hours a day, this is a model that they can deploy. In terms of what they sell, there's a couple of ways we go about it. You mentioned one's called the urban mining hack. We have a number of ways. That, in essence, says that you know I am a consumer, which you, most of you are. The typical consumer of products on this Amazon channel is women 27 plus. They buy about 80% of all the Amazon products on Amazon to the tune of over $630 million a day. Third party sellers like us make up 70% of those sales. So when people say Amazon you know, is a giant conglomerate for corporate good, uh, you have to remember that most of that powered brand, powered business and back end benefits come from small business owners, individuals and small businesses. Corporations only make up about one percent of the sales on the platform. And then it goes down to small, medium sized businesses. And then 70 percent of those are literally mom and pop shops who sell on Amazon as a marketplace. So it's important to understand the economics of it, which also creates the opportunity, mainly because most of those sellers do not understand the marketing, the engine, the brand or the capabilities of the system truly and haven't fully leveraged it from a business perspective. Since we were business builders and we were company owners and we were creating and developing businesses, we just happened to choose e-commerce as a, as a mode and mechanism uh, over a decade ago in terms of Amazon. 20 years, though, I've been involved in this. I dropped out of college to go into e -com when, in fact, college could not teach me how to do this. And I needed to go get a job to learn because that's where the money was being spent. And so I jumped in the corporate world to learn how to do e -com, to do business and spent over a decade between uh, consulting, between Sprint and then IBM, where I was a global business consultant for IBM up until 2007. So I learned the corporate, I learned the trade. I always knew I was an intrapreneur who was working in, on entrepreneur activities until I finally left in 2007, became a true entrepreneur. But the selling aspect and what I sell literally comes back to that urban. What do I currently buy from Amazon? If I can go back into my environment and look for the last 90 days at my seller history on Amazon, and I apply those statistics that I just told you, which are 70% of those products being sold are coming from people like me, you should understand a good majority of the products you've purchased on Amazon were sold by somebody like us. So the simple answer is, is it something that you could sell? And the answer is always yes. The answer is yes. There are many products you don't realize you've purchased uh, that are around you every day in your home, serving solutions for your house, your family, your kitchen, your life, whether you want to jump higher, or run faster, lose weight, gain weight, whatever, that you can sell. So once you understand that concept and you shift your 
mindset and you start to train your brain away from being a consumer and you start training your brain to be a producer and a creator of those products, you start to see what we refer to as white cars. The analogy was borrowed from a long time ago with a, with a story that was brought to me by a friend who had had this epiphany. And the epiphany was he had gone to buy a car and he had a specific car in mind and he was super excited about this car. So he went down and he said, okay, I want this model. I want the leather in this. I want the white car. I want this trim. I want this feature. And so he found that car and he was super happy with it. And so as he's driving it off the lot, he notices there's another one just like it setting just around the corner and he completely missed it. But he saw it when he was driving off the lot. Well, on the 20 minute drive home, guess what he saw? I saw six more of those exact same white cars that he had not seen previously. His thinking, his shifting and his perspective had changed. Had the white cars always been there? Absolutely. Had he not been in the mindset uh, of perceiving and in abundance, seeing those around him? No, but it suddenly shifted. And when he started to look, they appeared everywhere. As we train people to understand that mindset objective and then apply it into the e-com world, what you'll discover is there are more products than you can do in a lifetime. So you end up with a new problem. And the new problem is, well, which one should I actually sell that is actually going to make me money that is actually going to get someone to buy it? And that is going what we call by the numbers. So if you take the emotions out of this seller model, because it's a very data driven and analytically driven model with data points that have to be met, 47 data points for each product have to be met in our criteria so that they sell at a certain pace, a certain profitability that we can predict in 90 days, the sellability of that product that we know in a 12 month annual run rate, what our percentage of net profit is going to be, and that we have a business plan for that. Not just guessing and not just throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. That gets very expensive. People marry their products and then they get stuck wondering why it doesn't work. So we go buy those numbers to determine if there's a product in the last 90 days that I purchased and you can just write down a big list of them on a notepad or something and just, you know, come up with a list of these product ideas based on what you've already purchased. The next step is a first level analysis and to say, look, does it sell more than 30 to $300 in retail price point? Is it something that's solution oriented? Is it something that's solving a problem or is it just a trend? Is it just a nice to have? Is it something that I want or is it something that I need? The differences in the way we look at that product first level and then go into the numbers to actually determine that we should or should not sell this product. It's down to the profit. It's always about the profit of the product. And that is a determination of my ability to not only run the company, make it profitable at the P&L level, but also pay myself so that the business continues to operate so that I can obviously make money or my investors can make money from those products and that the business has an upside potential and has a longevity and operational cap capability that it has uh, potentials for operational in independence, making it almost automated or even making it passive by hiring others to manage it for me. And then having a 18 month run rate of business time and profit that makes it enticing to other investors who actually want to buy those products and buy that business so that my company can manage it for them. So as we bro, you know, bring those up, we have investors who are hedge funds, home offices, invest accredited investors, et cetera, looking to buy companies. Uh, so that mine will manage them for them, making it passive for them. So my business builders get into a position of growing these companies in 12 months and getting into a position of specific types of run rates of profit and profitability and performance, where we hit a performance goal with them of hitting 100,000 in net profits in 12 to 18 months uh, or less, and that that business has all of those potentials built in. And it literally goes by the numbers. And when you determine the numbers and profitability, I can then know with more than 80% confidence when that product goes in the market, there's not only demand for it, there's not only other competition that's buying similar products, but that mine has a unique and innovative solution oriented aspect to my brand in which I'm literally gonna go and buy up all my competition. So one of the things we've learned to do is literally go in and dominate the competition on Amazon because many of them are immature market sellers. And with our business experience, marketing and our brand building experience, we are able to select very good products. We are able to know how they're going to work and how they're going to mature in the system. And of course, our goal is to build that business with the end in mind, which is the exit. Yes, we can cash flow it like a short term rental, but later on we could double the sale of that business and gain back two years of profit and then go do it again. And then we can run multiple brands at a time. So if you borrow the analogy of real estate to the virtual real estate and inventory aspect, you should understand some of the differences. What we don't face at the real estate level with inventory shortages and interest rate changes that you might face if you're trying to get a multi-tenant facility or trying to get a short term or you're trying to get a, a rental property is the inventory is uh, unlimited. The opportunity potential is unlimited. The amount of real estate you can capture is only limited by your time and capital. 
And if you should deploy uh, those amounts in, in correct uh, measure, um, I've had proven case studies of people doing a million a month and four months and five million a month and nine months. It really gets down to the product and the, the capitalization of it. So I know I'm going into a number of areas to answer your question, but there's a number of nuances to what you actually sell to understand why I wouldn't say sell fuzzy bunny slippers for $19 on, on Walmart uh, or Amazon and expect to make a million dollars. You're going to have to move so much volume. What I look at is profitability. I could move a product at $50 and profit per unit to my pocket every two weeks. And for every unit that sells and move 500 of those every month, my logistics are less, my profit is way higher, and I can go get 10 and 20 more of those exact products that fit the niche and the solution-oriented aspect of my brand. And that changes the business model. It makes it profitable, <laughs> which is very mm -hmm. important, right? Exactly. And you've been talking about uh, real estate as a product. So can you give us a concrete example of a real estate business that you have put together and brought to profitability through this particular model? So it, what we refer to as virtual real estate would be a location in, in Amazon in which you become a brand inside of that system. When someone wants to go look for, I'm going to give you an example, a, a high-end bike seat because they're your weekend warrior who loves to go mountain biking but doesn't just ride a Huffy they got from Walmart. They ride the top in Cannondale and they're going up the back of Pikes Peak. They're not looking for a cheap $19 piece of Chinese plastic to stick under their bottom as they ride up that hill and down it. They're wanting the gel cushion component with the springs in it that has the hole in the middle so you don't crunch and munch your goodies and all the other stuff. They're looking for the bells and whistles. They're willing to pay 89 bucks for that or $99 for that because the perceived value is much, much greater to them than the $19 piece of Chinese plastic. So as we look at that, there's a real estate inside of Amazon for sellers who are currently moving those kinds of products. Okay. okay. And in there, there could be anywhere between four to five competitors who are moving products of similar nature. And the equation we use to define that is similarity plus familiarity okay, equals trust with Amazon. And what that means is I can build up a brand that no one's ever heard of, compete with four or five other brands that most people have never heard of, and become the dominant brand and own all the virtual real estate inside of Amazon that where those products can be sold. And that virtual real estate on Amazon is usually what's uh, keyword driven. So people are looking for a gel bike seat or they're looking for that. And that real estate that appears on that landing page after that keyword is entered is extremely valuable. And when I own that real estate page, when I own the ads, when I own the organic search results, when I own the sub ads, there's different levels of ads. And when I own that, they see me as the dominant brand. They see that and I've now owned that real estate. And when they show up and look at it, it's really the only thing they see. So it becomes much more interesting uh, in terms of the ability for me to take on each one of those different places into the thousands or millions of opportunities to own that virtual real estate with my product inside of Amazon and become the dominant brand that everybody sees. And that is an important component of the business. As I brand register on Amazon, meaning my brand is a legitimate brand, it's an LLC, it has all the bells and whistles of a regular business, but together, um, Amazon recognizes me as a serious business. When I take my brand and I am placing it in that real estate, that virtual real estate on the dot com of Amazon, and I have a trademark around my brand as well. I now have intellectual property, which is another asset component to my business. As I build those and build that real estate, as I go to sell that business at some point, it's a portfolio. It's a portfolio of products. It's a portfolio of that real estate. And it ties into the market, the comparables of the market, the upside potential of the market, the growth potential of that, whether it's capitalization of that brand that needs to be done or its expansion of that brand into new areas. You might call them different divisions different areas of the market, different in the physical world, it might be across town at a different subdivision. For us, it's just additional keywords, additional locations inside of Amazon where we can plant our flag. Uh, and as we do that, we own that real estate. And the way that we do it, the competitors won't be able to reclaim that because of the way we do our business. And we learned to do this for the last nine years. And with that comes obviously a lot of potential for many of millions of people coming through Amazon every month to see your product first and to buy it in 30 seconds or less. They have that familiarity of Amazon's system of trust. They click the add to cart button. Many people still think they're ordering from Amazon, even though they're getting products from us because we're losing, you know, we're using that infrastructure. And so the brand affinity can grow very quickly. So we plant our virtual real estate flag across many thousands and even millions of keywords and places inside of Amazon where we become the dominant force.
So you take these potential opportunities through, I think you said, this 44-step uh, process. Is that correct? Uh, it's a 44, it's 47 data points. It's called our green light spreadsheet. It literally has run millions of dollars and millions of units. The data all has to add up. The three particular profitability data points have to go green in terms of our criteria. Once they do that, and once we validate manufacturing can make that product for the price and the cost of goods we expect it, along with shipping and logistics costs and freight costs and things we add in, including marketing costs and literally operations of business costs and stuff, uh, we expect a certain profitability for every unit that is sold. And we do that because we all, obviously we want to maintain the maximum amount of profits we can for every unit that's sold. We want each unit that is sold to buy us another unit. So we set that aside so we have reorder capacity. And then we want to know that if I go in and then competing with another brand that I can buy as much of their customers as I can get and steal those customers away from another brand. Because that first sale that I get from that customer leads into what's called a customer lifetime value. That is, if they buy a second, third, fourth, fifth product from me in the next year, how much is that customer worth to my business? I'm shooting for every customer to be worth a million, excuse me, a thousand dollars minimum every year once they purchase an initial product from me. So you get millions of customers to come through and obviously that changes the game very quickly. If they buy from my brand and they love my products, which they always do because we create very high quality products, they'll buy a second and a third and a fourth product from us. And because of that, we now have our real back end, which all businesses cannot scale past seven figures without a real back end. And we can set that up even on what's called subscribe and save, where people can consume products in three, six, nine months based on their auto setup. We can build up a whole subscription base on Amazon as well, of people who will buy every month, uh, every 60 days. And that creates a huge upside potential for us. So you could start off, I guess, with one product, but you're going to want to add products. Yeah, here's a simple equation for you. You ready for it? Here's the pro tip. The more products you put on Amazon into your brand, the more money you make. So our mm -hmm. game plan is called the five by five game plan. And it goes very simply like this. Our goal is with our builders in 12 months to launch five products into the marketplace, five mm -hmm. products in your brand that average five sales a day across all five of those products. Now, each of those products makes more than $12 in profit per unit. You now have over $109,000 in profit in those products every year. Okay, and that's just five products doing an average of five sales. It assumes a, a business base case, which I'm sure you're familiar with, right? That base case obviously gets us set up with a product and brand line that moves over time through additional products that serve that brand, serve that avatar to each, you know, each product five by five, making an additional 100000 a year in profit. So as you continue to repeat that process and work that game plan, it's just a matter of time of how fast you're going to move to the next series of five mm -hmm. products. So I've had individuals, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, uh, do that very quickly in 12 months. They've moved to 10, 20, 50 and 100 SKUs in 12 months and scaled their brands very quickly. I've had other people, you know, come in for 18 to 36 months and get to 10, 15, 20 SKUs doing three, four or five hundred thousand a month or more in sales. Uh, it has to do with the brand. It has to do with the profitability. But the game plan is still the same. So as they find those products and those products sell organically, we are, again, assuming a base case. Now, if I my base case is if I put in 50 to $100,000 in 12 months, then I would expect my five by five game plan to return 100,000 in profits and more than 100,000 in profits. But base case, 100,000 in profits in 12 months or less. With those numbers, I now know I have a scalable brand. I now know I have solution oriented brand focus. I now have a customer audience. I have a profile or what we refer to as a customer avatar. You might say, you know, make that to, Similar to your avatar, you might look for real estate deals or short term. So we have an avatar as well. And we look then to exploit the Amazon system that actually loves you, you having more products. And it actually loves you creating a great brand and they want to help you. In fact, they'll market for you. They'll advertise for you. They'll give you account reps. They'll give you email blasts and other things you can send to their prime members. So our base case is just the bare minimum we'll accept, but it's not the average. The average is mid case. The average is a brand that takes three, six, nine months to go to market, makes between 50 to 100,000 a month in recurring revenue and goes scale from there. And scale would be paid traffic and marketing inside of Amazon to take those winning products and continue to go down in that vertical. So you're familiar with the concept of a funnel, you've poured oil or water into a funnel, right? You know, it's big at the top and it has a small part at the bottom. We're looking to put a good part of products in that first 12 months into the top end of that funnel. What we're looking to do is see how, what comes out of that cylinder. And as we determine and test the products in the market, 
because we're not smart enough to tell the market what it wants, but we've gotten very good at reading the tea leaves and understanding the data and then what to do next so that everything we put in the top comes into more of a cylinder. So as we start this funnel and we figure out who's in it and who wants it and how much we can sell and which products are doing the best, we know that we can hedgehog, as Jim Collins says, from good to great into that cylinder so that we have expected results for everything we pour in. We're going to keep pouring into that cylinder and we're going to keep hedgehogging into that one brand until we have, you know, 10, 20, 50 SKUs in there. And the beauty of it is, you know, I've got guys who started with, say, you know, 40, 50 SKUs when they launched into the big end of their funnel. But now they have between seven to 20 products that are actually making, you know, 80% of their revenues. And they're doing between 100 to 500,000 a month in sales. So it does it with e-com. It does not take an enormous amount of products. Uh, to get in front of an enormous amount of customers. That's what we really love about it. Once you dial that in, you can reach hundreds of thousands to millions of customers. Well, excellent. Well, Neil, how can we get in touch with you and take advantage of what you have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's pretty simple. What we do at the business coaching level at Voltage, and that's predominantly what we do at the consulting and management consulting level, is an invite only. We are looking for those who understand a good majority of what I just said in terms of criteria, business, and aptitude. What we do is done with you, meaning we're going to work with you to show you how to build this business and put you in that CEO level. And then at some point later on, it can become more automated, even even passive later on. But I want every builder to understand that they need to un- they need to know this business model. This This isn't a done for you, just step in, throw money at Voltage. There are other kinds of businesses that try to do that, where they try to get you on Amazon and say, hey, just give us your money. We'll sell your products and return a profit for you. We don't do it that way. We know the market and the systems are required that uh, people actually learn how to manage this business correctly and then understand the opportunity to exit it. So if you go to VoltageDM.com, it's V-O-L-T-A-G-E-D-M.com. There's a free video that I uh, did with Kevin Harrington from the uh, Shark Tank, uh, original Shark Tank and in, uh, inventor of the Invomercial. Uh, he's also a, a partner in Portfolios, uh, which is our acquisition company. And he and I talk about the opportunity that is Amazon, what we've done on it, the business model, and much more detail. It's a free goodie, free video. Check it out. It will explain what we do and how we do it with our builders and the expectations of what we'll do together. I encourage you to just grab that video. It's free. Check it out and give you some more information about how we work with our builders. How long is the video? It's only about 45 minutes, um, but it goes through the entire model. It's a question and answer session at the end. So many of the questions that most folks have about this between time and money and how do we work together, are all answered in that video. Well, excellent. Well, Neil, it has been fascinating and uh, enlightening and enjoyable time with you today. So thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance, brought to you by Steed Talker Capital, a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steed Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steed Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at steedtalker.com.